Greetings Madarians, Ken Suaga here to bring you another update on the Madara mod here. We are currently on version 0.3, that's, that's including chapter 3. And uh, what we're going to talk about in this video is the features that we have in the mod. We're going to cover the old and new, so just in case you haven't seen any of these videos or you're new to the mod, uh, you will be able to just to pick right up and uh, start playing. So Madara is a large game here, and uh, these videos are here to help you with the features of the mod to uh, make getting into this game so much better because it's a great game and I really want the whole world to enjoy it and so does Succubus Publishing too. Uh, I just want to thank them real quick for the opportunity to take part in, in making this mod and uh, bringing it out. Um, thank you for their support. Also Bone White, uh, he is a good partner of mine here helping with this mod and uh, his scripting skills are really uh, what we need to thank for some of these amazing features that we have. The last group I want to thank is the community uh, and over at Discord. Um, the uh, Madara community is so great. Uh, we had a few users too like Pooter3002 who created the, uh, the skins for the colored hero models. They're amazing. Thank you for taking the time to do that in Burn. Uh, man, you have taken so many people through uh, the first encounters uh, on this game and teaching people how to play you are awesome and amazing at doing that So thank you for Everyone for sharing sharing the love uh, if you're not part of this community There'll be a link in the description come join us. All right So when you fire up the mod you're gonna see this wonderful new change log that we're gonna be implementing Thank you again bone white for this awesome idea uh, It's always a good idea uh, if you haven't seen any of the new updates to go ahead and, and read through what this is and it, yeah the, there's some hot fixes <laughs> the more features we add and, and adding more content uh, we typically run into issues so we apologize right off the bat for that um, but you know we want to make the best mod out there and we understand that it could be frustrating that there's gonna be bugs but remember this is still a beta uh, once we have the final product though we are going to make sure that it's nice and rock solid all right, and if you don't want to see this anymore, once you've kind of read through it, you can always hit that one. Or if you just want to get into it and come back to this later, hit that X. When you load the mod up the next time, it will be there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start down with the heroes here, and I'm going to work my way around the table and just going over all the different features of that area and what they do to help you out. I did enlarge the table for you guys. Uh, it was kind of small and getting cramped there, but I think we found a good medium here. Uh, not too large and not too small, so it's just right. Thank you, Goldilocks. So starting with the hero board, we have these wonderful scripted buttons up here uh, that you can use to uh, left-click to increase and right-click to decrease according to whatever mods and different things that you put onto your character. We have a damage counter here. Works the same way. Left and right-click to go up and down. Also, the little casting dice here as well. Uh, as soon as you upgrade those, you can click on those to upgrade you to let, remind you what level uh, they will be at. So they both work the same way. Left click to go one way, right click to go the other way. Uh, we did move something on you. Uh, there is now a new feature called Game Keys. So if you go up to Options and Game Keys, uh, the ability to highlight cards in a color or unhighlight them. Uh, you will have to set this on your own. For me, I have HU and M for these other features that we used to have. So I have uh, H to highlight and U to unhighlight. You can change those to whatever uh, keys you want as long as they still don't conflict with other keys. Um, that option is there for you too. And a little quick side note too, if you really wanted to change your hero models to the color that you're playing, let's say um, that you're the, the yellow player, you can, if you wanted to, just go in and click yellow, and it will only change the uh, color on the base. So, so now moving on to the initiative track, uh, we brought that a bit closer for the users because you're, you're kind of checking it often to see how uh, the initiative order goes, and it still works kind of the same. You just hit this reset button here, and it will take everything on the track, shuffle them, and redeploy them out. Now during the game, it is not scripted, though you will need to add uh, the Characters and enemies that you face during the game manually. Uh, we are planning to eventually have that scripted so when you load a mission or whatever, uh, they will automatically add what it can to the initiative track. Uh, but it works pretty simple. Uh, you can just search up here if you need a water loa, 
type in water and you have what you need and then just drag it out there's one little note though we did fix the issue with tokens so when you hit reset it's going to ignore those uh, but I would suggest keeping your tokens down here uh, off the grid uh, and, and only leave initiative cards on this track moving up into the adventure area we've got a lot to cover here um, this is where a lot of the meat comes from with uh, with Madara and you start off with the the regular campaign book if you want to go into crawl mode which is a quicker shorter version of the game you can switch to the crawl book there uh, and we have the books broken down into chapters so I'm going to go ahead and move back to chapter one here and uh, you just kind of click along and go through the book uh, and you can continue in the adventure but we do have a jump to page button in here now you can just or an input just put the uh, page number that you want to move to and it will take you there uh, can save you a lot of clicks because these books can get pretty thick and we have the red revealer here so a cool part about Madara is that there are these little hidden text areas that reveal themselves as you go so it's I love that choose your own adventure and you just take the red revealer and you reveal what the text is we have two different sizes too sometimes they can get pretty crammed between different options and what you need to reveal then you just click that little button there to change the size if you wanted something a little bit smaller. Well, let's get over to a mission here real quick. And your first uh, first mission is going to be uh, the Mass Day 1. And all you'll need to do is click Load Page. And it will put all the assets out uh, that you're going to need. And it's not going to do anything that's been hidden. So this is spoiler free. And as you can see now, it's, it's just everything that's in the initial start of the game. When there are more components that you need to add to the map, you will have to manually draw those on your own. Let's say you need to draw another um, combatant that's, that you're fighting against. If you just go to the intelligent deck and you can hit search, and if we need like, and this is not how this game works, or this uh, mission, this is completely different. So just drag out this water loa and just use that search feature to, to get what you need. And once you have that out, uh, this area here is designated for your AI cards. Sometimes you may get a few more if you want to bring them across the top that way. But for the most part, you should have enough room in here. And once you get them out, you no longer have to search for those figures. There are little buttons hidden on these and you can just click there and it will give you the model that you need. And also, you can have the damage trackers are now scripted onto these cards to help um, speed up the process. And these are damage markers, not life counters, so they're going to go in reverse. Uh, so you start with 0 and go to 12 for uh, when they die. We also have a dice roller on these as well. So you just click on that and it will roll the dice for their combat attacks. Same for casting and convictions. You can just click on those. Now a quick way to reset these if you need to, uh, you can just delete the model and there are two buttons here. There's the bottom button which spawns and the top button which is the damage counter. Uh, you can just delete the model and click on it again like so to respawn it and it resets it. So that's kind of a quick way. We'll do a better fix for that in the future. Um, that's how it's working now. At some point you may want to clear the table. Uh, it will automatically clear if you load a new mission or if you wanted to um, put some cards out and read through some stuff. You can just click the clear button also. You don't have to and that will clear everything off there and put everything back into its respective bags. During the adventure you're going to need to stash things every now and then so the party stash bag is over here. If you ever need to get a command, they're a little bit different than the intelligent. They'll be found in this bag. Again, you can just right click and search for what you need. There will be times when you are told to uh, draw a random loot or draw another totem. Uh, these are here. If the game tells you to draw a random loot and um, you, for whatever reason you need to shuffle this, these are locked and you can't shuffle them. So if you just right click in the shuffle, that will shuffle the bag for you. A little tip if you didn't know that. 
Or if the game specifically tells you to draw a certain thing, like a blue exit, you can right click and then you will see the, the blue exit there and you can draw it out quickly that way. And then again, just right click, shuffle, to shuffle that bag so that it's different than what you left it as. Also, you will need to draw from the tile bag uh, and sometimes you need to draw multiples, like the obstructions. If it asks you to build something extra, uh, you'll need to copy and paste. So instead of filling up these bags with 20 different uh, of these, and oh, there must be, there's a glitch there. Um, having an extra one in there shouldn't be. Uh, you can just copy and paste once you draw out the tile that you need. And then when you clear, it will re uh, establish this bag and put everything back the way it's supposed to be. One of my favorite parts of Madara are the audio narratives. And if you want to listen to those as you read along in the adventure book, uh, you can click the button that's a chapter that you're on and it will load them into the playlist. Now to get to that playlist, you click on the music button here and you'll click on playlist and then you'll just hit play for uh, the whatever narrative that you're looking for. And they're sorted by chapters. So chapter one there has is one itself, or you may listen to them all. You may not listen to all of them, uh, but they're sorted by chapter and you can go through and play whatever audio narrative that you're on. And it should sync across with anybody else that's in your party as well. They should be able to hear it. So now onto the combatant loot area here. We have um, this scripted for you as well. So at the start of the, the mission here, it will tell you what loot level you're at. Go ahead and just select that button. And whenever you need to draw, you can either just do it manually or you can click this button, which will shuffle that and deal out one for you. At the end of your mission, you're either going to be told to restore, and when you do that, you can click restore here, and that will pretty much just wipe everything. If it doesn't say restore though, make sure that you don't do that. Uh, what you need to do is you need to click these arrows here, and that will save those over there, uh, helping you get through the loot deck uh, at an even pace. Uh, so there are missions that do carry on from one to the other that the loot deck here will not change. So make sure you pay attention to that, that you're not restoring when you're not supposed to. Over to the uh, hidden stuff. So we've put that all into one nice little container here. And I'm not going to show you or click any buttons here, so no, don't worry about any spoilers. Uh, but the adventure book will tell you to draw something from the hidden decks. Uh, you just only need to put it in once. Uh, you'll click this button here. And it's going to spawn a, a white bag up here with all of the assets that come along with that. And once you've removed those assets from that bag, the bag will disappear. And when you clear the table at that point too, those uh, new hidden objects will go to their respective containers down here. And you'll be able to find them where they belong. Uh, this is just kind of a temporary fix here. Uh, these rare consumables and, and rare weapons are specifically for this pirate wench and you'll figure out what that is in the future. Uh, eventually the rare weapons will be added to the market as you'll see later. This uh, deck here is for a variant. There are variant rules if you only have uh, three players and you only want to use three adventurers instead of the four adventurers that the game is built for. Uh, you can use two or three and these cards will let you have linked adventurers. So to kind of simplify things, uh, but still give you the edge that you need to uh, overcome some of these missions. You can find your espers and familiars here. You have all your tokens up here. Uh, there is now a scripted uh, SP counter here. It's the same, right click, left click to increase and decrease. If you ever need extra damage counters too, those are up here. Uh, more dice, more tokens. Uh, we'll, we'll come back and talk about those guys here in a bit. Item upgrades now have a special place for them. So you can right click and search. You can do a text search if you want to find something specific and figure out what they are. But once you have them unlocked and they are available for purchase, you can store them outside. So these ones here are the ones that aren't available yet. The market now includes uncommon, and they are hidden actually. Uh, so once you unlock them in the campaign at that tier level, you can just click on that and that will then 
let them be unlocked and available for you throughout the rest of the game. We also have a sort button here too, so if you need to discard something uh, and you don't really want to figure out exactly where it goes or uh, there are times when the game will tell you to combine a certain group of things and draw one at random, you can do that uh, and then just hit sort and it will automatically put them all back in order for you. Oh, and to group them like that, um, let's say it's weapons, you just control click and control click and hit G to group. And then you can hit R to shuffle, uh, draw your random one, or what some people can even do, just take the bottom one is your card. Or you can use the game key that I have. Uh, just a quick reminder on that, I made that uh, M for market. You can just hit that and it will shuffle and draw one. And then let's go ahead and just sort, put everything back to where it belongs. Here's the alternative book section where you'll have the rule book. Um, that's pretty straightforward to what you need to know there. One thing, if you want to right click, you can go to pages here and you should see most of the pages. You want to quickly go to places or you can type it in like if you wanted to go to page 15, just type in 15 real quick on your keypad or your uh, above the letters, not the keypad. And that will take you to that page. So here's the diagram book. In the in the campaign, there are hidden areas and stuff like that that you're going to reveal. and the mechanic that the Madar uses is a diagram book, so it's going to tell you to turn to a certain diagram. And I'm not going to show you what they are so I don't spoil anything. Uh, but once you're on a diagram, it's going to be very similar to uh, the mission book here. You'll see a load button. And you can click that load, and what it's going to do, it's going to give you the assets that you need. So let's go ahead and let's load this up real quick. And so here's our mission one. And let's say for whatever reason, it's going to add a whole tile to it and it will deploy all the tiles and all the tokens and everything you need for the most part will just land here on this book and then you need to put them out according to what it says. So if you want to, we have a nifty little pool over here that will, um, so let's say that this diagram book gave me this tile and I need to add it uh, to this space like right here. Um, what you can do, we have the map key here, and if you do a right click, uh, it's the left click, let's do a left click first, it's going to move it over one square that direction. So if I wanted to move it up one square, I can do that. Or it will move it, if I do a right click, one whole map tile. So that's this is a square here in this area, and this is the whole map tile. So if you just want to move things around a lot, you can just right click or left click uh, the direction you want to go. And uh, that's what this map tool will do for you. We built that for this diagram book to help keep things kind of hidden and secret for you. So, uh, and also close to you. The next one we have here is the scripted sheet. Uh, these are the toggle buttons that you can click and put check marks in them. And you can type in these notes down here. And you can enter your people, the, your adventurers' names, enter gold amounts, uh, what page you're on, your XP and the damage they may have, if they're injured or not. So uh, this is scripted and will save. There's also a bounty book. At some point, you will be able to uh, partake in this bounty. And it is also scripted in the setup. You'll have a load button there when it comes to that time. Spark notes are cliff notes of the adventure text, um, just the stuff you're reading through. So if you don't want to go through that stuff, I think you're crazy because the story's awesome. Um, here's just a quick little notes for that. Here are the variant rules. I talked about the variant cards that are up here. If you're interested in using those, if you don't want to use four full pledged adventures, you can just do that. The variant notes and when you click this button here it'll bring a tab out or a tablet out and you will be able to watch this video that you're watching now so if you want to watch that in game on over here to uh, the disciplines are now separated and you can just do a left click and it will bring them out and sort them by level or you can right click that with their out to bring them all back in now, if you only wanted to bring out a certain level, um, the way that 
DTS is searching right now is kind of not working well for the way this is set up. So if you type one, it's actually going to show you level four stuff, level one stuff. So it's kind of weird. Um, but if you type in level or number one and then a colon, it's only going to have the level one assets. That way you can then just bring in all the level one stuff. Um, if already you just want to search through them real quick, uh, everything is named. So if you know the specific spell that you're looking for, you can just type its name in. So there's our one way to get through there. All right, the last thing we're going to cover here is the HP bar tool. And this isn't ours. We didn't script this. Um, there was a big request to have uh, the scripted bars over it. The problem is um, it's kind of in reverse. It's an HP bar, not a damage bar. Uh, but if that's how you guys want to play it, go ahead and work that that way, or you can just damage them and have them showing as damage bars. That's just a temporary fix that we put in because there's a lot of big requests for it. Um, we are going to have eventually a custom uh, bar for them with the custom statuses and all the stuff that can happen during the game. You'll just have to give some time to get to that. And so into the future too, uh, we're going to be doing content updates separate from feature updates. Uh, we ran into a lot of challenges trying to add new content and new features at the same time. So you're going to see a bit different pacing when that comes out. Uh, if you didn't know already, we are adding all the chapters to the mod. So there will be this will be the full box of Madara. Uh, and I am so excited to be able to put all that into TTS. It's, it's so great. Uh, and also, if you didn't know, uh, we were going to be testing the next Axe, Axe 2 and Axe 3, uh, in this mod too. And so we're trying to build it in a way that's, that's flexible to stay in that. And if you want to be part of that, come join that Discord community. There is a link in the description. The feedback so far that Succubus Publishing has received is um, they, they, they are so grateful for it. Uh, and um, they just, yeah, really want this to be a big part of making this game solid, uh, well-balanced, and uh, they are inviting you to be part of that. So if you're interested, again, the link in the description. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, you are a champion for making it this far. Uh, hang in there. Uh, we will continue to upgrade more of this stuff. Uh, so thank you guys and have a wonderful day.